Welcome indeed to this video. And I want to do a bit of an update on vaccines and where we are with different vaccine candidates. And it's looking very promising because the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine basically illustrated the point of principle that it is possible to make an efficacious vaccine against this virus. And I'm sure that many others are going to follow us as we're going to look at. Firstly, though, today, just briefly, I've had a torrent of emails and complaints about yesterday's video, which looked at the effects of hydroxychloroquine on patients that had been diagnosed for about a week in hospital, patients that were already poorly. And rightly, so many of you have pointed out that that's, this says nothing about the use of hydroxychloroquine as a prophylactic agent. It says nothing about the use of hydroxychloroquine at very early stages because the patients we were looking at were already hospitalised, were already poorly, already had acute respiratory distress syndrome. So you're quite right, the study simply doesn't address that. And for some of you who say that the study in yesterday's video completely missed the point, I take that point entirely. It says nothing, the study we looked at yesterday, says a lot about patients that are already sick. From that, you're right, we can't generalise it. And this is an area where knowledge is still lacking. Hydroxychloroquine as a prophylaxis or in the very early stages of infection. Yesterday's study simply doesn't comment, so we're no further forward on that. So I fully take that point. Uh, now, now, going on to the vaccine. Now, the, 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 the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, uh, they'd so far uh, used the vaccine on a sample size of 43,000 people, including the placebo, just over 43,000 people, and 94 people were, were been infected and 90% of those were in the placebo group, indicating the vaccine is 90% effective. Now, Pfizer-BioNTech obviously are pretty pleased with themselves that, that there's the first vaccine to demonstrate efficacy. But basically, um, there's several other vaccines at the same late phase three clinical trial. And if you want to look at it like this, the Pfizer-BioNTech one was actually a bit lucky in that 94 people in their sample got infected. Because basically what you do is you vaccinate a load of people with a vaccine, you give another load, the control group, a placebo, and then you just wait to see who gets infected. These people are not deliberately infected. They are not inoculated with an inoculum dose of the virus. They're just told to carry on living their lives as normal. So from the point of view of the uh, vaccine trial organisers. Um, they were lucky that 94 people caught the infection and that was able to give them some significant data. So they've been a bit lucky. Uh, it's good, they've got lots of good publicity, it's fine. They deserve it, there's a lot of hard work gone into it. They weren't actually officially funded, they weren't part of the Operation Warp Speed, so uh, but they got money from other places obviously. But uh, So basically it's not that this vaccine is better than the others, they got there first because most people got sick uh, got the infection who happened to be in their group so they were somewhat fortunate uh, it could have been another vaccine got lots of people getting sick in their group so the others are basically just waiting for people to get infected it's a funny way to look at it but it's the case anyway not to take anything away from them um, messenger RNA vaccine so what these vaccines do as you probably know now is you give some of the RNA that codes for the SARS coronavirus 2 that gets into cells in the body and it kind of hijacks the cell's protein-making machinery. And the RNA that codes for part of the virus, that part of the viral protein is, is actually made by the cell, excreted, not excreted, but moved to the outside of the cell, where it's detected by the body's immune system, who learn, the body's immune system then learns to recognise that particular molecular shape. And of course, that molecular shape is part of the SARS coronavirus too. So that's how the immunity is developed. First time it's ever been done, all really quite uh, impressive, actually. Um, so 94 people infected so far, they, therefore they could say it was 90% effective. Now, we do know from phase two trials that it gives antibodies and T cells. And we've talked about this. My personal view is that the immunity could last for quite some time. Um, it's reported to have mostly moderate to mild uh, side effects. Now, all vaccines have side effects to some extent. And so the fact that they're moderate to mild sounds like the side effect profile could well be acceptable. Now, we have to differentiate between side effects and complications, two completely different things. Quite normal to get some side effects. That's not the same as a, as a, as a complication. So side effects, yeah, you know, after a vaccine, you might feel a bit knocked off for a, a couple of days. That can happen. 
although I had my flu vac last year and I felt fine straight away. But you know, it, ju- it just, it just, but it, it can, it, it's normal. Sore arm and feeling under the weather for a couple of days after a vaccine is normal as the body mounts an immunological response to that vaccine. Now, the RNA, uh, the ribonucleic acid that this vaccine is made of, falls apart at normal temperatures. Now, I must apologise. In my last video on this, I said minus 18 degrees centigrade. That was wrong. This vaccine needs to be stored at minus 80 degrees Celsius or centigrade, which is minus 112 degrees Fahrenheit. Very, very cold. Now, the manufacturers are making special boxes to transfer it in. And in sophisticated countries like the UK or the US, there is an infrastructure there that can facilitate this. It's not easy, but it can be done. So I imagine it's going to be transported in dry ice, which is liquid carbon dioxide. And uh, liquid, uh, not, not liquid carbon dioxide, what am I talking about? Solid carbon dioxide. I don't think there's such a thing as liquid carbon dioxide. Because what the dry ice does, the reason it's dry is it sublimates. It goes straight from being a solid to being a, uh, a gas at minus 78 degrees Celsius. So we could pack it in dry ice. That could kind of work. I think that's probably how it's going to be done. Now, what is going to be the next vaccine? Well, it depends. It depends how many people get the infection in the experimental group and the uh, placebo group for the uh, the vaccine that's being trialed. My, my money's on the uh, AstraZeneca Oxford one as probably being the next one. Made from a chimp adenovirus adapted to express SARS coronavirus 2 proteins but not cause SARS coronavirus 2 infection. This has had a shed load of money. The US has given 1.2 billion dollars for 300 million doses. The European Union has given a similar amount of money for 400 million doses. And uh, it's being studied in India and being produced in India as we speak. So up and running at India's uh, Serum Institute. And they apparently, the, the combined manufacturing capacity for this vaccine is 2 billion doses for next year for the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. This is an impressive level of production. So um, trials should report next month. They're just waiting for people to get the infection. So they can find out, or they would hope to find out, that many more people got the infection in the placebo group and far fewer people got the infection in the group that are actually injected with the active uh, vaccine. So basically they're hoping for people in the placebo group to get the to get infected is, is really what, what, what this amounts to. Um, but the point is the people in the placebo group and the people in the vaccinated group, in theory, because it's a ra- well, in, in, pra- in practice, because it's a randomised sample, they've got the same chances of catching the virus. So this is what a clinical trial is. Um, now, next could well be the Moderna, um, Modern Nas- National Institute of Health uh, from the United States vaccine, another MRA vaccine uh, to produce viral proteins in the body, as we've said. Uh, providing uh, so already already they've been provided with rather provided with nearly a billion dollars in support there's had a lot of money thrown at it um, October they finished recruiting 30,000 people including people of different ages which is very important and one of the encouraging things so far is that, that these COVID-19 SARS coronavirus 2 vaccines do seem to be generating a good immunological response in the older age group Flu vaccine was terrible at this. They had to add an adjunct into it to try to try and make it do that. So this is encouraging that it seems to produce an immune response in, in all age groups. Um, emergency youth or, or use authorization by the end of 2020 uh, is expected uh, for the Moderna NIH vaccine. And the US have pre-ordered uh, 100 million doses and uh, Canada, Japan, Qatar have also ordered huge amounts of vaccine so that could well be the next one and shortly after I'm predicting the Johnson and Johnson uh, this is an adeno uh, virus so adeno viruses common type of viruses often cause common cold type features um, but uh, one that's been modified to produce SARS coronavirus 2 proteins that the immune system will recognize as being foreign therefore amount an immune response against against hopefully a antibody response and a memory T cell response as well. And we believe that is. We believe that is the case at the moment. 
So the Johnson & Johnson could well be next. Again, it just depends who gets infected in their samples. This is based on a technology that was developed for an Ebola vaccine. Ebola vaccine is named after the Ebola River, where the uh, disease Ebola was first discovered. Interesting to note that that was named after the geographical location where the virus was first discovered. Um, US funding, getting on for half a billion, pretty good. Uh, US has ordered one billion, uh, paid one billion for a hundred million doses. You see the way that rich countries are just buying up options on all the different vaccines. So whatever, whatever horse wins this race, they're, they're going to get that. They're going to get that vaccine. They're going to end up with several, I think. These are all promising. Um, European Union's ordered 200 million doses. Phase three was launched in September, 60,000 people being recruited. Now, the advantage of this is a single dose vaccine and again results in December. So um, you wait for a bus and uh, none comes for 10 months and then four come all at the same time. So they are all very promising. Pfizer, uh, BioNTech are already there. Well, we're just waiting for regulatory approval being applied for now. But pretty soon we're going to have the Johnson & Johnson and the, um, the National Institute of Health one as well, the modern, uh, modern NI, uh, National Institutes of Health vaccine as well. So what we'll be able to do is, once these vaccines start being used, work out which is best for which age groups, then people can be given a vaccine which is most specific to them. We're going to be awash with vaccines in the next few months in developed countries. I just hope that uh, the, the excess purchases that we've made that we're probably not going to need because we'll have way, way more than we need are, are going to be distributed, distributed and manufactured, hopefully manufactured globally because this isn't over for any of us till it's over for all of us. Now, I'm not sure what this means. I don't think anyone knows at the moment, but Brazil has just halted the phase three trial of a Chinese vaccine. Serious adverse incident reaction to a participant on the 29th of October. Don't know what happened to him. Word is he died or she died. Um, now, if you've got a large number of people, it's quite possible that people get sick or even die after being vaccinated. Doesn't mean it's caused by the vaccine. But the Brazilian authorities are sufficiently concerned to at least pause the trial. It's happened before with other vaccines. Might not mean anything. We simply don't know yet. But we do believe that someone has died after taking the vaccine. Whether they took the vaccine or the placebo, I don't know if that's been decoded yet. This is called the Coronavac. And it's uh, Sinovac is the Chinese organisation that is producing it. Uh, apparently there's 11 vaccines in phase three now. The ones I talked about, I think, are the hot favourites, though. So they're not saying what happened to the patient, although word is the patient has died. Um, officials in China allowed emergency use uh, now. So we understand this is being rolled out in China now under emergency use. Now, emergency use should be just that, emergency use, because the study, the studies are not done yet. The phase three trials aren't completed. But yet we believe that tens of thousands, many tens of thousands of vaccine doses have already been given in China. And the data for what's happened to those patients is not published as far as I am aware. And I have looked for that and it doesn't seem to be out yet. So um, authorised for emergency use in China, but that's turned into, I don't know if it's quite turned into carte blanche, but it's, um, it's been used more than I would classify emergencies. Now, the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, 90% effective. So what do, you, do, what do you hear in the news today, the 11th of November, the Russian vaccine is not 90% effective, it's 92% effective, obviously better. Do excuse my cynicism. Uh, but, um, yeah, let, let's look at it and let's not jump to conclusions. So Sputnik V for vaccine, I guess. The Saturn V rockets were Saturn Vs, weren't they? So I don't know if that's coincidence that they're playing on that. As they think back to the space race. And the Russians, of course, were the first to put Sputniks into orbit. Right. Um, this is based on two human adenoviruses that normally cause the common cold. 
They're claiming it's 92% effective. This is based on interim results from 16,000 trial participants. Now, the, uh, the Pfizer vaccine had uh, 43,000 participants, was it? So based on a slightly smaller sample size, but it's still a good sample size. We haven't been told yet how many people have caught the infection. But we do know that in Russia at the moment, a lot of people are getting infected. Um, as far as we can tell, cases are still increasing in Russia. So presumably there was a pretty good chance of quite a large number of these 16,000 participants getting infected because of the situation in Russia, which, which paradoxically is good for vaccine research. Um, two doses, uh, three weeks apart. It's being rolled out domestically now before the studies have been done. So both the Chinese and the Russian vaccines have put the cart before the horse and they are rolling it out before the phase three studies are completed. So in essence, the current domestic rollout in Russia and China is, is the phase three study. That's really what it means. And um, let's just say it's not, it's not the way the other ones are being done. Phase three study, the uh, Gamaliel Institute is in charge of that. 29 clinics across Moscow, 40,000 volunteers being recruited. At the moment, uh, just 16,000 data available on just 16,000 at the moment. 40,000 being recruited in total, which is about normal. 30, 40, 50, 60,000 would be reasonable. A quarter receiving the placebo, so it's not half and half. So 75% are getting the active, uh, getting the active vaccine. 25% getting the placebo. So, so that means we should have 30,000 versus 10,000. Still very adequate ample sizes. And the Turkish government, as far as we know, has just agreed with the uh, Russian authorities to produce the vaccine in Turkey. So it's looking like it's effective. What we don't know is the safety profile. Hasn't been published yet. But having said that, to be fair to the Russian vaccine, we have no, we have no um, fully peer-reviewed academic work on uh, any of the phase three studies for any of the Western vaccines either at the moment. So that's where we are with that. Now, um, I was going to go on and talk about uh, other things, the United States and the UK and um, new research on mask wearing. But I think I'll leave that to a separate video because I've gone on a bit longer than I intended to. So we'll leave that one there on, on vaccine update. What I now believe, well, I believe this for months, but, but this, this is confirming it, that there's going to be several vaccines. You and I should be vaccinated in the early part of a few of us, but by Christmas or New Year. Most of us should be vaccinated in January, February, March, April next year. And that means that um, COVID-19, um, I believe, can be eradicated in a few seasons. This is a, a case, I believe, where vaccines are really riding to the rescue of uh, humankind, as indeed they did for smallpox. Okay, thank you for watching as... Oh, I should just mention, it is the 11th of November. So um, now if, if you're in Australia, of course, you have uh, Anzac Day. Uh, America, uh, America, you have um, a Memorial Day, of course. In, in the UK, we have... Um, Remem our Remembrance Day is the 11th of November. Uh, the 11th of November, um, 1918, was when the guns fell silent on the Western Front. That's why I remember the 11th of November. And the reason we have a poppy is the poppies grew all over the, 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 the Flanders fields in, in northern France, where all over the fields of, of the Somme and uh, the battles of the First World War. And if you go to France now, um, and uh, I, I've done this quite a few times, to, to go to the war graves, it's always a remarkably moving experience. And in spring and summer, there are a lot of poppies still growing around there, blood red poppies. So... Um, it's quite, 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 a, quite a moving experience if you get the chance to go. And, uh, and of course, this is a symbol for all, all the people that we remember who have been killed in all the wars since then, as well as, as, well as those uh, first wars. And uh, recently remember people from, of course, Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, 
we all have our views on those wars, but uh, that doesn't alter the, the loss that many have suffered. Okay, thank you for watching this video as always.